anything that takes us from that state of all possibility and brings us down into one possibility. is going to diminish the scale and potential of, of, of who we are and what we can do. There are so many elements to this. And when people say, well, why have we known about this before? Well, I've spent 20 years in nearly 50 countries researching a great stream of different subjects which on the face of it appear completely unconnected. And it's only when you connect these apparently unconnectable subjects and areas of society and life that the puzzle pieces fit to the point where you can go, oh, I can see it now. Billions of people wake up every morning and they go to work um, or they try to survive another day. They're not spending 20 years fitting these pieces together. So how can they see it? Until I started fitting them together, I couldn't see it. I was very skeptical of authority, always was, and the people who claim to be in power, but this bigger picture, I hadn't got a clue. And one of the areas, to come to your question, that I've understood more and more in the last few years has to be looked at before we can understand the true nature of what's going on in the world, and that's actually the true nature of reality, and how we can control our own reality instead of having our reality dictated to us. We are uh, points of attention within an infinite uh, stream of consciousness. It goes across multiple dimensions, multiple realities into infinity. We're a point of attention. So your point of attention can be so tiny um, that you completely self-identify with the labels. And you might say, uh, who are you? Or oh, I'm Bill and I drive a bus. No, no, you are consciousness having that experience. You are not Bill and you're not dr uh, driving the bus is not who you are, it's what you're doing. Um, you are consciousness, you're the consciousness that's, that, that that is an eternal uh, uh, expression of, of infinite states of awareness. Uh, so you can so focus attention that you believe you're Bill driving a bus and that's who you are and nothing more. Mm. Or you can be a point of attention that expands its uh, awareness and its sense of self and reality and says, I am infinite awareness having the experience whatever label you give it and that is a completely different way of looking at life um, because when you think I am the labels you are in the world and you are of it everything that you um, you experience all the information that you gleaned for your perception comes from the belief that you are your labels and of course that is obviously going to give you a self-identity of limitation. What can I do? I'm only R. But when um, you self-identify with being consciousness, awareness, no form, they're, they're just vehicles for experiencing certain bands of frequency, like this one, which is tiny, by the way. Um, but when you self-identify with being the consciousness, having the experience, the experiences themselves do not have the same impact upon you. Because when you experience a situation and you believe that is you in your totality, then you, the experience and you basically become the same thing and thus has this massive impact upon you. So for instance, um, if um, you're ridiculed or people hurl abuse at you, um, if you're self-identifying with the labels that they are abusing and ridiculing, then that becomes a very powerful thing. <clears throat> but when you self-identify with being consciousness, having an experience, the same abuse and the same ridicule does no effect at all, ultimately, if you expand your self-identity enough, because you know it's just a here today, gone tomorrow experience. Well, first of all, 
It's very clear that the classic Western explanation of how the universe was formed and how the solar system was formed, i.e. the Big Bang and all the rest of it, is uh, complete nonsense. And even some mainstream scientists are now beginning to say that's the case. And uh, I, I've written a lot uh, in my latest book and in, in, I talk about in my current presentations about the moon mm -hmm. and the classic mainstream scientific explanation of how the moon was formed for instance is 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 ludicrous it talks about uh, the fact that a Mars type planet hit the earth when the earth was forming and a great chunk of the earth broke away and became the moon called the whack theory and what you find when you look at what are supposed to be mainstream scientific explanations, when you take it back, you find that actually it was someone's theory back here, which then through constant repetition becomes accepted fact here, when it's nothing more than a theory. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in that moon explanation that has any basis in fact or supporting evidence whatsoever. It's just a theory. And you find this right across the explanations for how the universe was formed and what the universe is. What's been missed and what some cutting edge people are now beginning to envelop and encompass is the basic understanding that we are living in a virtual reality universe like a virtual reality computer game of enormous advancement this has been missed up to this point by mainstream science for many reasons but not least because mainstream science is obsessed with the physical everything's got to be physical what you can touch see taste the five senses and the truth about what the universe is lies beyond the five senses I mean you know we think we are at the cutting edge of human knowledge and everything. And yet, if you stop someone in the street out there or in, in any other city in the world and you said to them, who are you? Where do you come from? Where are you going when this is over? And um, what is the nature of reality? And here we are living our lives every day in this world and we don't even know what this world is. The few who are behind the people we see, they know what this world is. And they know how the mind works. 